Hey everybody, I'm Mary Delgado, your host of the Blockchain Herd. I want to thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and please don't forget to hit the like button and tell your friends about my channel, have them subscribe as well. Today's guest is Evan Vandenberg. He's the Director of Business Development with Wax.io. So before we get going, I want to say thank you so much to you, the Wax team and the Wax community for all the support that you've been giving me as I start this new channel. Um, I mean, the contest you're doing by giving away Wax Key to the people who support my channel is truly, truly amazing. I am so grateful and so blessed. And don't let me forget this cool swag. I got yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool stuff yeah. I got going on. Thanks, Evan. I, yeah, well, you know, I think we just want to say thank you. I mean, it, I think it's great to have, you know, people like yourself promoting, you know, cool new content on the platform. Yeah. Um, you know, on a personal level, it's awesome to see like more women get involved in the space um, and having a voice for that, I think is huge. You know, we talk about mainstream adoption, but at least 50% of the population, you know, seemingly doesn't seem to be represented. So I think it's awesome to have that here. Yeah, I'm glad to be a part of it. It's been so, so, so much fun. So, you know, talking, talking wax and um, I guess some people that ask me about wax, which you know, first of all, what is the, what's the acronym for? And then like, if I were to explain WAX to someone, give me like an elevator pitch of what I can, you know, to say someone really quick, that makes sense, where I don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I'll start with the first question. So WAX stands for Worldwide Asset Exchange and the X being exchange. Um, so that's the acronym portion. Okay. Elevator pitch. I mean, for me, the elevator pitch is, it was a purpose-built blockchain for trading NFTs um and, and digital items really so that's like the shortest like one sentence thing um i know that doesn't really that doesn't maybe it's not the right pitch for let's say you know your friend that's not exactly a no coiner or, or not super blockchain familiar but basically it's a trustless system for trading you know digital items um extremely fast extremely user friendly uh you know much more so than the alternatives out there. So I think that's kind of the core of what we've done. Uh, and we've always kind of centered our business around the concept of item trading, the importance of it. I mean, that's where we come from. Uh, you know, our founders have basically invented that industry of, you know, trading digital items, in-game items. Mm -hmm. I think that's really kind of like becoming a huge, huge thing, right? Not just like in-game item trading, but like the idea that you don't have to sell something physically, it doesn't have to all be this like e-commerce, you know, mechanism, right? There's just all sorts of ways to engage with customers and, and fans. Right. Not holding on to the physical thing that that's kind of nice, you know, to have to drag it around with you sort of, you know, <laughs> yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Now you can have it in your phone and there's so much, there's so much there where you can blend the two different concepts, right. Of traditional ownership and, and separating ownership from possession. Right. And I think that's a big key of what blockchain does. Um, so anyways, yeah. New component. So you were talking about, um, you know, NFTs, which um, that I learned that, which is a non-fungible token, right? Yeah. So, um, so I want to talk a little bit about that um, and the NFTs. I know that recently um, it was NFT day last week and there was a lot of news and events that were happening around that. And then um, I saw that Topps launched this um, Crash Gordon pack. It sold out super, super fast from, from what I saw. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the way I understand it is that the initial 500 um, were free, and then there were two, two staggered sales after that. So I want you to first explain um, NFT Day um, and yeah. NFTs, uh, then explain uh, the Topps pack that launched. And, and finally, did Wax um, or Topps expect that type of reaction to the pack? Yeah. All right. So that, there's a fair amount to unpack there. I guess yeah. let's start with just like, what, is an, what is an NFT, right? So a non-fungible token, it's a horrible term. I wish we could get rid of it. Right. Um, but what that really means is that it's a digital item on the blockchain that is unique, right? So Bitcoin is a fungible token, which means that one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. There's really no differentiation between any Bitcoins. They're all the same value. They're, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're fungible. Um, a non-fungible token so even in the case of like tops, right? Maybe you and I have the same atom bomb card, right? Mm -hmm. You can have same cards, but they're actually completely unique uh, individual assets. And that's important for a, a bunch of reasons, right? There's all sorts of stuff that can be stored in that metadata that can be processed. There's different features and functionalities that can be applied to one card versus another. Um, I, the probably the most low hanging fruit here is like mint numbers. So even if you and I both open a pack, right? Right, one after each other, I get mint one, you get mint two there's vastly different uh, values in mint two versus mint one, even though they're the same card. So it's kind of this 
I, I realize it's an esoteric concept, but if I would think about it in terms of like a physical uh, analogy, which would be, you know, pretty much everything in the physical world is non-fungible. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, baseball card is, every baseball card is slightly different, right? Mm -hmm. And same thing goes with cars. There's, there's different makes and models. There's all sorts of different things, right? Nice. So NFTs are really the digital replication of that kind of concept in this, you know, blockchain ecosystem, um, is, you know, specifically. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty so awesome. That's, it's NFTs. So I, I, I like to bring it back to car trading because it's just an easy one. So every card has a serial number. Imagine, you know, there's slight corners and edges and there's, there's, there's ratings and, 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 you know, um, quality on, on every single card that no matter what you think, there are slight differences. So they are fundamentally a unique card. Whereas theoretically, a dollar is a dollar is a dollar. Um, gold, any amount of gold, right, is, is fungible, which would be a pound of gold is worth a pound of gold, right, if it's all things equal. Um, so those are kind of the, the slight differences there. Um, they're significant, but they are kind of, I, I realize, esoteric. So then I forget what your next question was, was about the top flash Gordon kind of drop, right, an NFT day. Right. Yeah. So, so I wanted to do NFT day, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the guys at Coin Genius, Joel and Travis, um, I don't know if you were involved on the NFT Day stuff as well, but uh, yeah, they basically put on a conference, right? An all day virtual conference to kind of talk about the state of, of NFTs in the world today, right? There's been an incredible amount of innovation, I would say from January 1 of this year till now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's certainly on our chain, like it's just exploded, right? I mean, it's just become like a whole new business set. I mean, there are panels talking about it becoming a trillion dollar industry. and. I think what they wanted to capture was what is the state of things right now? What are, what's kind of the, the success stories of, of the moment? Where are things headed and where can we be in three or four years? And I think those are the general principles that were kind of guiding that. And they had a bunch of influencers, um, you know, and when I say influencers, I mean kind of the figureheads of, of the core companies driving that innovation. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great event. Um, Tops was very involved. Uh, you know, Tops is one of the partners I brought on to Wax. Um, they're really blockchain forward now. I think, you know, we can go into their successes and, and maybe we should just highlight the, the Crash Gordon thing now. So Yeah, and, and you know, going back going back to Crash Gordon, I mean, they went so incredibly fast that I didn't even have a chance to buy any. So yeah. I mean I get I guess it's great for these to sell out fast, but um, hopefully something will be put in place to allow more people a chance, you know, at getting at them. Um, you know, I know you guys, you know, staggered the times, but even with with that, it was really difficult to click you know, fast enough to buy any. So, but at the end of the day, um, it's a really good problem to have, right? <laughs> yeah, demand is incredible right now. <clears throat> um, I mean, for, for almost all, every IP we've done, we've sold out, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an incredible number that I, I will tell you just drastically exceeded my expectations. If you asked me on Jan 1, how successful NFT launches were gonna be by this point, I could have never pointed to this. Mm -hmm. um, this has been an incredibly, I think eye-opening and positively eye-opening kind of thing to watch happen in front of my eyes, um, which is a great problem. Now there are problems like you mentioned, right? Like now all of a sudden these things sell out in 10 seconds. Like that's great. That's great for the brand baby. Right. I mean, but it isn't right. It's like, there's a double-edged sword because in order for that to continue being valuable, right, you have to have a healthy secondary market. And if you don't have a ton of people with these assets trading and everything else, like then it becomes problematic. So to highlight the Flash Gordon thing, and then I'll go into potential fixes here. The Flash Gordon, I know I was watching the stream live, had my finger on the button, and I know that it sold out in like something like seven seconds, like two thousand. Seven seconds. Yeah. So like, and that that could be the difference between your internet connection and mine, right? Yeah. And I think that's something we want to avoid, right? Um, the demand's crazy, which is great, right? So let's all agree that's a good problem to have. Now, how do we? how do we kind of put things in place that make things, you know, still obtainable and interesting to every user, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's multiple ways of doing it. I really like, you know, we just did a time to release where COGS did a three hour window where that would be the only COGS are ever printed for that series would be printed for three hours. So you had a three hour window and no matter what you get in there and you'd be able to buy a pack. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's an interesting mechanic, although there's shortcomings on that side, which are there could be in a huge print, right? I mean, there could be a ton made and then it could devalue the, the cogs or the, the cards over time. Right. Cogs did it in an interesting way where they used so many designs that there are very few duplicates really even out there. Um, so they, they thought that through. And I mean, that comes from their experience running H1Z1 and other things uh, where they had done time sales like that. I think another potential component is doing something like you know, almost like a, a Kickstarter or a waitlist where you actually get 
a ticket, right, ahead of time, and you buy your ticket, and, and you can only buy so many. And, and instead of this rush at one time, it's kind of like, no, no, I already bought my right to that. I get that thing after the fact, right? And there's that's like- the thing you're tossing around right now, because that seems yeah. like an interesting concept. Yeah, so I, yeah, it's definitely something we're tossing around. I think we're open to a lot of ideas. Like, you know, I've been researching drop companies, like, you know, Supreme, for instance, or even Nike, when they do a drop, right? Those things sell out in like a second, and then the next second, they're all on StockX, right? right. And you're paying 10X premiums or whatever. Um, so it's not that necessarily anyone solved this perfectly before. Um, I think there's a balance. So I think it's going to be some combination of multiple gating factors, limitations on how many you can purchase, um, and trying to kind of do it by committee and not just like one mechanic solves all. Mm -hmm. So I, I keep I keep hearing this term of, of, of a whale, and I guess in, in, as it relates to my viewers who don't know what a whale is, it's not you know the, the big whale, but it's it's a person that that comes in and just buys everything up because they've got so many tokens or whatever that they just buy everything up and it doesn't give everybody else an opportunity to buy an item. So um, there's just less less available. So yeah. how can you eliminate that from ha happening? And do you think that what we just discussed will help with that? Yeah. So whale, you did a really good job describing it. It's just Thanks. somebody who's it's basically somebody who can move markets with their holdings, right? And they can kind of take the fun out of some of the situations, you know, certain drops, things of that nature, because of their ability financially to impact that market. Um, yeah. So again, I think everything ties back to that. I think whales are like, you want whales, right? Like we, we want people who are really financially invested in the project and, and love it and all of that. I think it's really going to be, how do we sophisticatedly limit the amount of purchases per person? You know, and I think at the core, if we can guarantee the 10,000 unique people are going to get this, then okay, then, then it's like, all right, you didn't make the one out of 10,000 list, then we'll have to, you know, bump that up or whatever, right? And I think it's, we're exploring all options. Um, I really don't know what the right answer is, but I know it's not going to be one thing or, or another. It's going to be a combination of things. It's going to be time gating. It's going to be wait lists. It's going to be other things. I think in the beginning, you want to be sensitive to everyone to make sure that it works for everyone, not just, just a few, right? So that's why you're, yep. you're kind of like um, beta testing. Oh, <laughs> what, totally. What, what yeah. you're going to do. See, look, I'm using these big terms, beta testing. <laughs> yeah, I, I would almost view every launch as a beta test so far. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, and like, people probably hate hearing that because like, you know, they all want it to be perfect out of the gate, but there have been hiccups and, and we're learning something on every drop and it's getting better and better and better. But yeah, you, you've hit the, you, you've hit the nail on the, on the head here. It's, yeah. it's I, in my, my perfect world, we sell one pack to every person, right? Like that would be my perfect world because that, that then incentivizes trading on a level, of, you know, 10 X what it is today. And, and that's what I want to see, right? As people have fun, engage, yeah. gift them to their friends, get more people involved. I don't want it to be the same 700, 800 people who are just eating up the majority of, of packs. Yeah, we get enough of that in the stock market, right? <laughs> right. We're trying to we're trying to avoid that type of behavior, right? We don't need uh we don't need that. Right. So um, you know, going along the lines of the NFT day, what would you say were the uh biggest takeaways from NFT Day that anyone who isn't able to attend uh the show should know? So I I for one know that I was just involved um with uh M Blue art auction charity. The charity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was involved with that and that was super exciting to see the very first um, you know, full length music video on an NFT. That was pretty exciting for me. It was pretty crazy that we're, we're starting to see so many things that you can put on a blockchain. So what, what would you say was a, was a big takeaway from NFT day? Uh, yeah, I think it kind of comes back to that, right? Is that like, man, are we all early here? Like, this is so early and we're seeing so much interest already. And I think like what we're doing right now is so simple compared to what these things are going to become and so much less, you know, interesting and intricate than, than what they're going to be in a year from now. And I think my main takeaway from that whole thing is, wow, people love this. There's an incredible demand for this on, on all sorts of different angles, right? I mean, from art to, to music videos, to games, to random collectibles. People love this, this medium. And it's about how do we make that accessible and better for everyone, right? Because I think there is an untapped hundreds of millions of people who have no clue what these things are that are going to want to know what these things are very soon here. Um, and I think we're on that precipice. I think if I learned anything from my perspective, it's like, man, we're at a tipping point right now. Like this is the start of like, you know, it's like 
we've sold out everything, but that still only accounts for like a couple million bucks, right? Mm -hmm. That's nothing compared to like where this thing's going. And so, you know, so I think it's interesting. That's what's uber exciting for me is like that we're, we're, um, we're at the start of it. Like we haven't even, we haven't even begun. So, um, you know, you think about when, when emails and internet and all that first came out, people didn't understand what that was, but, but man, when they did, it just went crazy. And that's, that's where I feel we're at in this space. You're hundred percent right. I mean, this yeah. is, this is quite literally like the 96, 97 internet days, right? I mean, we're not even approaching what I think is even kind of the, the it's almost like we're before the beginning. It's weird. Like in my head, it's like, this is so rudimentary at this point in time, even though it's fun and it's engaging, but just knowing what these things have the you know, capacity and capability of doing and, and the more people who get involved, the more creative minds that get in there. Uh, like you had Uplift Nation and, and, and Blue and, and, and those guys. I mean, you know, I mean, that's like, that's like, it's seriously equivalent to like back in the day, like somebody put a music video on the internet, right? And five people watched it or whatever, right? But it was I like- am TV, remember that? My. Oh yeah, I, yeah I'm, I, I was an MTV kid. All right, I grew up in that generation. I was running home from the school bus trying to watch TRL and yep. Park and all that stuff. I love the music videos. Yep. But um, yeah, so I think it's the the takeaway is we're early, but man, are we seeing some bullish signs? Yep. So like um, on these NFT releases, there's been um, you know many of them that we could talk about. A lot of them that have been highlighted. I think there's been six of them. You know, the Garbage Pail Kids and the William Shatner and the Cogs. Um, that we just talked about and then M Blue, you know, doing his, but, you know, I know that the, on the initial releases, um, the sales required, um, what we call fiat, which is a word that I learned and fiat is, you know, cash or credit cards. So see, I'm, I'm learning this terminology, um, but it required fiat to purchase, um, to, on the initial sale. Right. And then on the secondary marketplaces, um, you use wax P for the purchases. So now the past releases, they've been wax P only. And I think um, uh, blockchain heroes were the ones who started that. So my question to you is, is twofold. Do you think that this is going to be the trend going forward where we're using wax P only for the NFT purchases? purchases? And then the second one is um, um, I noticed, because I did a video on how easy it is to do a wax cloud wallet. Um, and there's a button on there um, that was added uh, that says use MoonPay. So explain yeah. what that is. That's, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So I think, you know, just to get back to like general trend shifts and where do I see things going? So like, look, from, from any perspective, crypto is a superior payment to fiat, right? Like it, it just is in terms of if I'm a merchant and I'm selling something, you don't have chargebacks, you don't have fraud, you don't have all these things because you you literally cannot do those things, right? I mean, once this thing is transferred, you either have it or you don't, um, you know, so long as the merchants act in accordance to that. But again, the smart contracts are written in a way where they're auditable and everything else. So in theory, they're really, the fraud risk, everything is so vastly different on crypto versus fiat. Mm -hmm. um, so I will say, I think the world's like, the world should be trending in that direction. I think it, you're starting to see that. Um, I definitely think that the NFT world is trending in that direction. I think credit cards are immensely powerful in getting new people who have no crypto background involved. And I think that was more of the thought process around it than anything else. Like for us, we would, we would prefer to do everything in, in WaxP. Like that's the easiest thing ever, even, even other cryptos, right? At least we don't have to deal with fraud, chargebacks, you know? I mean, if people don't understand that like this stuff puts businesses out of business all, you know, all the time, right? Is like this people you getting fake credit cards, buying these things, especially when they have secondary market value, right? Because then you're like, it's like free money. You're like, oh yeah, no, I didn't buy that. And then you have the object and nobody has recourse of pulling it back. So in a perfect world, will we'll, we stop, we would never use credit card, right? I mean, that's, that's a perfect world. So sorry to go on a tangent there, but um, that is that. And then to bring it back to MoonPay. So why MoonPay is interesting to me is that MoonPay is kind of this like, and, and we've got a new partner coming on board here, Simplex and some others who are gonna be doing similar things um, where it onboards fiat to crypto very easily, um, where you can plug your credit card in. It already knows your wax. Like if you buy it from your wallet, it already can deposit the wax tokens directly in your wallet. And it basically acts as like a swapping mechanism for cash to crypto. And you don't have to like leave the platform or do anything like go to an exchange and all that, that, you know, I think becomes pretty tiresome for most. Yeah, it does. It's, it's just, it seems like there's so many steps that you have to do. So if you just make it one step there and, you know, I, I kind of um, equate that, um, if you go to the trending where you're just going to use wax p 
is like I think about like I I like going and I like gambling. I like playing uh, poker and blackjack and stuff like that. If you were to go to the win, you got to use win chips, right? If you yeah. go to the hard rock, you got to use the hard rock chips. But first, you have to take your fiat and you have to go um, to the cashier and then trade those in. So I guess that's what what we're trying to do here, right? It's essentially it's essentially the exact same concept hopefully a little bit easier like you're sitting at the table and you want more and you just click a button and boom you put the you know it's similar yeah I mean, you're at a poker table you hand them cash and and you get you get chips back yeah. that's the concept and then hopefully as things adopt it becomes more seamless and, and you don't have to kind of even deal with that process where it can become more of a one-click kind of concept um yeah but yeah i think you know geez online gambling i mean crypto such a good mechanism for that for those guys i mean that's just like how could you like even, yeah, I mean, it's incredible, right? I mean, it's no chargebacks, no fraud risk, no none of that. And you don't have, you know, a human being even associated with it. So, you know, without going into that, it is a better mechanism for transacting and depositing cash. Right. So, so while we're on the subject of um, NFTs, like you, you said two words that um, were interesting. Uh, first, you said smart contract, then you, um, but you didn't say this one, intelligent NFTs, like, I know that William Quigley, he mentioned that recently and um, on some, in some other Telegram chats, I've seen that too. So um, explain that because if there's intelligent NFTs, are there stupid NFTs? <laughs> That'd be a stupid question. Yeah, I mean, no, I, mean I, I don't like to phrase them as stupid NFTs, but let me, <laughs> let me give you an analogy, right? And it, it, William and I have both used this and, and this really does come from him. So, it, but it's, it's a, like right now what we're doing is the equivalent of putting a, a JPEG, like printing an image off, putting an envelope and sending it to someone, right? That's really the equivalent of the, the trading and there's monetary exchange and all of that. But like at, at its base level, that's kind of what you're doing. Um, it's you're sending the rights to a digital asset and it's an image. But what people forget is that every smart contract, which I just want to kind of clarify for the everyday users, really it's a, a supercomputer that the, the computer that you're, tr you're able to trade, right? It can operate, it can write, it can op you know, execute code, it can literally do almost anything a computer could do that you could want a computer to do tied in this thing. We're just like, we just happen to be using it for this one component and mechanic, which is trading, you know, digital collectibles, right? But there is this unbelievable untapped potential of, wow, I can make a call to this thing and a call to this thing. And all these things can kind of aggregate. And, and you know, William talks about, you know, he thinks it's going to be AI run, right? And you're going to do certain activities and just boom, it's going to, it's going to transition into something different. And, I apologize for the noise. We have garbage truck coming through. That's um, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I thought barking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of like intelligent versus stupid, I, it's not that they're stupid. It's just like it's like rudimentary given the capabilities of these things. And of course, part of the the reason that it's the intelligent NFTs are kind of, you know, I think William views it as twenty twenty one, and I and I and I do agree with him on that. Where we'll start to see that twenty twenty two, it'll get better and better is, you know, you have to have the underlying tech, right? Match the capabilities, right? I mean, right now you could write a smart contract that does incredible things. It's just how fast would it process all those types of things. So as things scale up technologically, you have this kind of unlimited potential on the, the smart contract side. I mean, it's literally a software system, right? Or it's, it's a computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, the Wax Advisory Council. Now, I mean, for me, just looking at the members that are on that count, the council, it, it reminds me of um, the the ninety two dream team, okay, that went to Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona. I mean, the guys, the the companies, the people that are on there. You've got Microsoft, Marvel, Google, Tops. I mean, just to name a few. I mean, that's truly, truly very impressive. So. I imagine when the word really gets out about the council, some people are gonna, they're gonna be scratching their heads and wondering, you know, how did WAX really pull this off? So, so what, what exactly is a WAX advisory council and um, what's the purpose of it? Yeah, so the advisory council, pretty, pretty simple to like explain. Um, we wanted to get the best and brightest minds from the best companies to sit in a room and engage on kind of the future of blockchain, how we can work with their companies, how their companies can benefit from this, what do we need to do in order to actually work with our companies? And, you know, we hope in the kind of, you know, through this, uh, you know, discourse and the, these conversations that there's crossbreeding of ideas and that we can bring new things to different platforms, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's such a different game when they have a seat at the table, right? And, and they can help us 
help them, right? And, and we can help each other from the perspective of, well, let's set some standards, right? Like let's set some like general goalposts of like, hey, if we can get here, this is gonna make it easier for us, right? If the app store can handle this, this, and this, great. Then we can at least account for that and we can work together to get towards that goal. And I think there's other people on that council that are, we're actually deeper in relationships with. We're actually developing IP or we're working with existing IP. And so there's a cross kind of section of the council of, there's some people who are, let's call them gatekeepers at their particular company uh, mm -hmm. that want to learn more that, you know, and, and I think a lot of this stems, our ability to have these people at the table stems from being a legitimate blockchain company, right? And I think people, you know, don't realize that like not all these companies in the top 100 and everything else are like Harvard MBA types, you know, and like everybody else is, it's not to like go down that, that type of thing, but it's like, we're a buttoned up team. We've got our stuff together. Our network, I think professionally, you know, has allowed us to do this. Um, and we really want to engage the right people because we know that like trying to boil the ocean by yourself is just a fruitless, you know, it's just a futile task mm -hmm. and we need these people on, on our side, at least some of them. Right. And, you know, within the bounds of what we're, what our community and what this, this whole technology is willing to do. But I think it's so valuable to have their insight and, and their direction and their, you know, and, and, and again, working with them directly. So, um, that's what that's about. I, yeah. And I'm, I've always been surprised that nobody really has picked up on that. And it's just kind of like, well, you know, for me, I don't care. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a long-term person and, and I care more about the projects coming on and, and, and real progress being made. Yeah. It's to me, it's so impressive. I mean, you even have uh, William Shatner, um, you know, yeah. like in top, like how they, you know, gotten involved. So do you think one should assume that maybe some others are going to do something on with you guys as well. I mean, you can, this is called the blockchain herd and I want, I want to be able to say you heard it here first. So if you got any breaking news you want to give me on uh, maybe somebody that's on your advisory console coming on board and doing something himself. Gosh, I mean, <laughs> I want to give you some little nugget here. Come on, give me something. Give me something juicy. How about this? I, I think within the next two to three weeks, we'll be able to really come out and announce some like massive, stuff uh okay. so i'm really excited about that i it's just look you heard I, it here folks you heard it here something massive is here. <laughs> yeah i mean on the ip front right my job has just entirely changed um you know just to be clear like it was so different six months ago doing these deals and it was just challenge after challenge after hurdle after hurdle and like now all of a sudden it's inbound right and there's people who are really big players who are like hey you know what I don't want to be the last guy on this train. So let's, let's talk and let's get something going. And once you kind of explain what we've done already and what they could do with their existing IP, I mean, imagine being a licensor, right? I mean, you're like, wow, this is like a million dollar, you know, a month potentially green stream revenue. Right. And, and that's really enticing for them. And I think right now, like it's getting to certainly getting to the point where like for the rest of this year, it's going to be very, very hard to even fulfill the IP, like stuff that we have coming inbound. I mean, all the way into well into next year. So I think, on that front, we're, we're excelling rapidly. I think we're growing the team. Um, I think we're hiring like three or four more people right now. So we just need more, we need more hands on deck. Um, you know, and that's a good problem. I mean, it really is. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice to have it's the ability to hire. We are growing that fast, you know, that's truly exciting. So, um, so now I, um, I actually uh, reached out to the WAX community and I know you guys are so uh, in tune with the WAX community and you really uh, reach out to everyone that's out there. So I reached out myself because they've been so amazing uh, to me and I wanted to ask them, hey, is there something that you would want to ask Evan? So I'm going to go on those questions right now. Um, I take okay. a few of what they, what they asked. So, um, sure. you know, here's one of them. Uh, can we expect an updated roadmap for WAX anytime soon, or are things moving too fast for it to even be relevant in two weeks' time? I think you're going to have a very clear short-term roadmap for sure, um, probably in the next two to three weeks. I think there's some major shifts in a meaningful way, and I think in the, in the most positive of ways, um, mm -hmm. some core shifts, right, of some things going on. Um, with the, 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 the platform itself and where we see the business kind of going. And I think we're going to release, William will probably be spearheading that, but you know, there's, there's some fundamental huge, I think evolutions that are going to be going live shortly. And then kind of, is going to be, I think you can use that as a, 
I don't know what the right word is, a guide of kind of what, where we see things going and, and how we can maximize the potential of this chain um, outside of just bringing on IP and new projects, right? I think there's some core shifts there that, that are going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, so, so one of the things that comes to mind, you know, for me, I'm, I'm thinking like Street Fighters um, or, you know, even, you know, I'm thinking Atari. So there's something growing with that maybe? Both those are, are locked and loaded, yeah. So I mean, that, that stuff's all pr being productized and all that. So I think, you know, I think the month of September is going to be a lot of, like we're releasing our Wax Cloud Wallet redesign. So it'll be a totally different experience. Beautiful, like- Is that really I, I think next, don't hold me to this. I believe next week. Um, so it'll be a huge update on that. And that's a, an update not only from the front end, but it's, it's beautiful. Like when you see it, you're going to be like, oh, this feels way more what I'm used to, right? Like App Store built in, all sorts of learning mechanisms, buy crypto here, send things in a quick, easy manner, featured banners, all sorts of like, it's just beautifully well done design from Dallas, rushing. Uh, I'm going to have Delta. to redo my video then, huh? Yeah, you will have to. <laughs> you, you really will. You want to capture that. And it'll yeah. be, you know, It'll be easier to use, um, more performant, all sorts of different things. So I'm excited about getting that out from a, you know, from the community's like short-term standpoint. Like there's some little, some little wins along the way. Um, but I think part of this month is is making sure that we have the ability to scale everything out the way we want to, right? And, and taking a little bit of time and doing things the right way, so that we can go and mass like bring on more and more partners without having to do all sorts of like custom things every single time at least from our team's perspective, right? Because there's a scaling, you know, effect that, okay, now it's like, well, everyone wants to do something, right? If, if that is the assumption, well, how do we even get it all done, right? And so now we've really taken a step back and we've really focused on, you know, templatizing a few things so that people can build on top of those, open sourcing certain components of the platform so that we're not kind of the only bottleneck um, available. So anyways, that's some of the short-term stuff. And then, you know, there'll be a big kind of, fundamental shifts that I think William will announce in the next two, three weeks tops. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. So then my next subject was uh, tokenomics. So I know that tokenomics, um, it was teased out in a webinar by Joel and Travis uh, during one of their blockchain heroes webinars um, yeah. a few weeks back, I believe. So um, here's, here's a question. Um, is there any more you can let my audience know at this time as it pertains to tokenomics? So I want you to start by explaining what exactly tokenomics is and why people seem so concerned about it. Yeah, so tokenomics are basically the underlying economics of the coin that powers your blockchain, right? Um, I think William's been very vocal about, you know, first-gen technologies versus second-gen second technology. And I think the, the goal of our tokenomics is to really tie the economic benefits of the platform to the token holders themselves. Mm -hmm. and doing that in a manner that is, I think, I mean, we've spent so much time over the last couple of weeks really like ironing this out, putting together, you know, the technical architecture and infrastructure to do what we want to do. Um, but it's, it's, I think one thing for your users, and maybe this is a, you heard it for your first is, is it's far more like intricate and not like necessarily more complex for the user, but it's, it's better than they think it is. It's not just going to be this simple, like, Oh, you know, we get to partake in certain aspects of the, the chain. It's, it's really comprehensive. I think Williams put a ton of, you know, brain power behind this. Um, same with, you know, the rest of the team. And I, I think people should be excited. Is there a date set for that? Tokenomics? So it's, it's going to be released in stages. It'll be a phased out uh, process. Um, I think it'll all be done in a reasonably short period of time. I know the first kind of phase is probably two. That was what I was kind of getting at with the fundamental shift stuff is, is really ties back to tokenomics. And um, I think that should be announced here, probably not next week, possibly the week after that. Um, and then with that will come immediate benefits and immediate uh, kind of capability. And then there's a very clear roadmap. So to get back to the first question of roadmap, there is a very clear roadmap of where that's going. Um, and it's a phased out system intentionally for specific reasons. Um, partially because we do want to get something out there quickly, right? We, we, we want to get this there. We want people to see what we're doing and what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people are going to be like, whoa. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be kind of a first of its kind um, in terms of how that works. And I think, you know, we've got some really smart economic people here, uh, economic minds that, that have thought this through. So 
Yep. I'm excited about that. It was moving fast. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, decentralized uh, exchanges. Um, yes. So I want to know if there's going to be a project like uh, DeFi Box on the WAX chain. I think there's going to be some very interesting DeFi stuff mm -hmm. coming from WAX on WAX. You're not talking very much about that. Some big news there. <laughs> I think it all kind of ties back to like the tokenomics, right? And, and some of the other things that we're going to be investing in and, and time and resources into doing. So I think, look, the DeFi space is really obviously exploding, right? Like we can all agree. I mean, for better or worse, you know, in some cases it is truly worse, right? There are some really bad projects out there in DeFi and, and anybody watching, just do your homework. It's not that, it's not that there aren't good ones. It's just, just be careful. I mean, there's huge gains to be made, but like every bubble, this, this too will burst. Um, and I, I don't know when, but I, I, I know there will be a, a reckoning at some point. Um, that being said, I think what we've uncovered is an incredible moment of time in blockchain and, and, and really for financial institutions of what we'll call the next generation of financial kind of transactions. But let's put it this way. I think Wax is thinking very strongly about that, is very involved in it on their own, um, you know, in, in, in other lights, right, as investors or you know, uh, advisors or, or just human beings who are interested in it. And we've tried to, we're definitely trying to take the best of that world and bring it to our world in a way that makes sense, right? That doesn't take away from what we're doing, right? Um, but I think we've come up some really interesting stuff around uh, DeFi uh, with our chain. And I think, you know, people forget DePos chains are really, really fast. And these gas fees that are making things really hard to, hard to swallow on, on Ethereum, which, by the way, you guys don't have gas fees. There's no gas fees. So, uh, you know, it's a matter of time until people start noticing that, right? I mean, Ethereum always, it's kind of the, the breeding ground for a lot of new concepts like NFTs, for instance. Absolutely horrendous experience trading NFTs of anything under $100 on, on Ethereum, right? Even over, I mean, still, you're paying what? You can't I make mean, anything like that with those gas fees, right? No, absolutely. Like, there's just no way, right? I mean, unless you get an ultra rare card that's worth five grand, you're willing to just, because there's maybe a higher price being paid over there, you're willing to do it. But I think, again, tying back to our tokenomics and bridging of different things across platforms, all of that's going to come back to play here, right? And I think there's going to be a way for us to really entice a lot of the Ethereum community, um, both the DeFi and the NFT communities into viewing, you know, Wax and EOS IO in a, in a different way. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Um, okay, so Viral. Do you know what a Viral is? Viral? No, Viral. V I R L? <laughs> so that's how I said it. I said it like that to my husband. He was like, huh? And I was like, you know, V I R L. He was like, Mary, you say it V I R L. I was like, okay, well, it's Viral to me. So, <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. I Anyway, I, I never asked anybody for uh, for their interpretation of how it sounds. I mean, it makes phonetically you're correct, right? I mean, well, I guess, I guess. Um, yeah, so virals. Is that. <laughs> yeah, so it was something. It's a concept that the team had come up with. Uh, what was it? End of last year, end of 2018. Uh -huh. um, which is just virtual in real life. I mean, it's 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 kind of this. You know, a lot of people call them different things: synthetics, digit physical. But really, it's kind of the bridging of physical and digital products and an ability to separate the ownership from possession and to use that in a really kind of useful capacity within blockchain. I think there's a lot of good examples of that. I mean, you know, I think Joel and Travis has even, you know, have started doing some of these things where, hey, some of their digital packs are actually tied to physical redemption, right? And you can actually click and, and get shipped a card um, or shipped a pack of cards. Yeah. And I think we're starting to see it kind of that start. I think to see that at scale, it's going to need a lot of different mechanisms. And I think that's what we've been kind of building. We're like, okay, well, we know this concept's going to hit, right? It's just a matter of time. Let's make sure we have all the kind of underlying infrastructure and technical components ready to go. Because the second that somebody really big wants to do this in a meaningful capacity, like we're ready to roll. And so I think you're going to see a lot of that sort of digital physical blend going on over the next five years. So you were talking earlier about um, hiring, right? So I know that you said that you're currently hiring a lot of uh, developers. So that must mean that things are going well, to say the least. And according to our discussion, they obviously are. So some questions came in as it relates to the, hire to the hiring. So um, one question was, does this mean that WAX will be, given, uh, will be giving even more tools for developers? And are there any plans 
for organizing online events just for developers or maybe organizing awards for uh, new developers on the uh, new WAC team. So more developers for or more tools for developers, definitely. I mean, that's kind of like always something, everything that we can do, I mean, it's in our best interest to create developer tools, right? I mean, every time that somebody has to come to me and ask like, hey, can your team build this? If we don't build that for everyone, then I got to build that differently every single time, right? And so I think there's a lot of like abstracting things that we've built for ourselves and for customers and trying to get that to the greater community so that development speeds can be, you know, really, really increased. Um, so there's that, that side of it. And then in terms of live events, I mean, after doing the NFT day, I, I would love to. I mean, there, I think there's enough, there's more than enough going on with WAX alone. I think we could bring in our partners and have like an awesome WAX day, uh, you know, even just for our community alone. And I'd be happy to look into that. I mean, that sounds like a no brainer. Um, to well, be fair, it just hasn't been organized quite yet. Um, it's something we thought about earlier this year. Well, you're, you're hiring developers, but you know, I, I know a really good podcast person that you can absolutely hire. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey you know, marketing is, is quintessential. I don't you no, know. I'm, 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 ha I'm happy to do this. I mean, if I'm bringing awareness, you know, to, to people out there that, that are, are like me that don't really know, you know, the uh, blockchain crypto space, then I'm happy. I'm happy about talking about other people's um, passions that that makes me excited you hear the excitement and obviously I hear the excitement in your voice um, of, of where things are going that's pretty exciting yeah yeah I mean for for me this has just like been such like a yeah we're at such a pivotal moment in time it's you know it's one of those things where you put your head down and work for two years and sometimes it feels fruitless and then like then finally you get to these points right where it's like oh wow Oh wow! Like this is right really fun. Wall, like, right against the wall, and then bam, here it is. <laughs> yeah, I think just you know, for the listeners, like I think we're about to see the next generation of wax, right? And I think that's really exciting, and 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 I'm really happy to see the team kind of come to an agreement on what that vision looks like, and and I think that's going to be more transparent or at least apparent to everybody as soon as you know we've kind of. It'll be in the next couple of weeks, but it, it is a really interesting plan and, and something that, to be honest with you, I didn't even think about a year ago, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't cross and, my mind. and going back to your, your advisory board even, I mean, tell it to people like you that are part of, of uh, the WAX family, but also the advisory board that are part of the family too, that are just, you know, helping grow awareness, helping grow the brand, just helping grow it. That's, that's exciting to see these big heavy hitters on board on your advisory board that to me is like huge and why more people don't know that is like crazy to me yeah well well get the good word out there um Just but like yeah it's it's you know and the other thing is like it, it's going to become too obvious yeah. at, at some point and i think with some of the new stuff we're we're, we're pushing it's kind of like you're it's going to be hard to avoid the topic right it's like at some point even right now it's wild to me it's like you hear people still doing projects on like Ethereum for an NFT. And I'm like, really? Like, did you, did you absolutely do a, you know, a deep dive of the landscape? And, and that was where you came to like, Hey, this is the best platform for me to do an NFT thing. There are reasons to use Ethereum. I just, I, I mean, I, th I still think that, I guess what I'm trying to get is the word is not fully reached everyone. Right. And that's something we need to, to, to focus on. Um, so here's the, here's the last one that I have for you. Sure. Um, and this is for me. Oh. Um, so I hear that you have a new addition to your family. Can you oh, show, yeah, sure. can show our viewers who that is? Let me grab her. She's sleeping. <laughs> oh. Wait till you see this. This is uh, oh, my God. Sandy the mini sausage. Oh my God. Hi. Sandy is gorgeous. I am loving her. When did you get her? How old is she? She is four months old. I got her, she was seven weeks when we got her. So I'm not doing the math on that about 10 weeks ago, 11 weeks ago. Are you getting any sleep there? You know what? Sleep's this dog, well, we were a little naughty. We started with crate, crate training and just, she won't do it. I mean, there's just, she's going You have to stick crazy. with it. You have to. You have to. It's hard. We're, already, to. we're past it now. She sleeps in between us. So <laughs> she. She sleeps 10 hours a night uninterrupted, just cuddles right into your arm and that's where she sleeps. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to share something with you really quick. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you my boy really quick and tell me if you see this on your screen. 
Sandy, you got a friend coming up here. Tell me if you see it. Hold on one second. I got to get to it. You see that? Oh, Sandy, look at that cute boy. That is my baby. I mean, he, he is like, his name is Bama. And the far left-hand picture is like when we first, um, well, we didn't get him there, but that's when he was born. And the lower picture on the lower left-hand screen, those are his parents. Um, oh. So we got him when he was nine weeks old. And you see him there with Hope with his little green toy. That's when we got him. Um, Look at those paws. Oh, my God. He's so noticed. amazing. He's like the most amazing thing. And look at the far right picture there. <laughs> he's, he's a smart guy, too. Yeah, he's he like, looks like an intellectual. He, he, He's super smart, in case you didn't know that. He's a super smart little pup. So he is very, yeah. very cute. He's, he's I like him. Absolute grow. blessing. And I'm going to show you what they grow up to be um, in just a second. Bama, come here, Bubby. Come here, buddy. Come here, my sweet friend. Come here. Can you sit? Can you sit? Oh. oh. <laughs> There's my buddy. This is my sweet boy. This is Bama. There. And he's, Beautiful like, German he's, Shepherd. he's in here all the time with me, just, you know, chilling out and uh, keeping me company. And Is he liking the whole COVID thing, getting to spend more time with you guys? Oh my gosh, he loves it so much. He's so, <laughs> he's so vocal. He runs a thing. You know, this is the light of my life right here. He's a, he's a good lady. I know. We're trying to get better. Like during the day, I'm trying to create trainer a little bit, but I'll, uh, I'll spare those details for the viewers and we'll talk <laughs> offline about it. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. Well, enjoy Sandy. Here you go, buddy. There you go. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely enjoy Sandy because their animals are a true blessing, and it's the best decision I ever made was to to get my my boy Bama, uh, my German. We're child. we're loving it. She is. Okay. She takes up my whole. Oh, she's so cool too as a lap dog. I mean, I literally do my work. She just sits with me. We go for walks. I spend all day with her. I have separation anxiety now from her. Yeah, yeah. I think I was sharing with you earlier that, um, you know, my sister, she, she'll come and she'll take care of Bama if, if we go out of town. And literally, I'll call like every few hours. Hey, can you FaceTime me? I, I, I want to see. Can I see Bama? Can I say hi? And then I sound like a child. I'm like, hey, buddy. And it's like, <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, but... Anyway, in closing, I want to say thank you, Evan, so, so much for taking the time to come on my show today. I, I truly look forward to following all of Wax's prog pro uh, progress because uh, I know there's, there's so much more coming in the coming months and in the next few weeks is what you said. So from what you told yeah, me. Not, yeah, not super long. But yeah, no, I really appreciate you having me on. And thanks so much for everything you do for the community. And you know, yeah. we'll definitely continue to support you and uh, look forward to, to talking with you soon again. Yeah, so I'm gonna give you one more chance. One more chance. You got some breaking news you wanna break here on the blockchain herd so I can say you heard it here? I feel like, I, I feel like I've given a little bit of, of <laughs> at least good timelines here. It's always hard, people forget it's not me and it's not even wax. Like it's our partners and other people typically that like, you know, it's gotta be a scheduled press release and it has to say this, that and the other. And like, it's not me. I would love to tell you guys all sorts of stuff, but. Right. I can't. Uh, I thought um, I could squeeze it out of you, I guess. No, nah, well, it was a good, <laughs> it was a good attempt. Right. Well, thanks again. I really, really appreciate it. I want to thank everyone again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit uh, the like button. I really appreciate it. All the links to any of the items that we discussed are going to be found below. As always, you heard it here on the Blockchain Herd.